So yeah, it's great to be here. My name is Patrick, and I'm one of the co-founders of Research Hub. And today, I'm here to talk about the incentive structure of academic science and how DSI, or decentralized science, can help to fix it. So first of all, a little background about me. Um, I've had the privilege of dropping out of not one, but two academic science institutions. The first was a PhD program in molecular biology at Boston University, and the second was medical school at Georgetown. Um, there was a common theme between all of my experiences in both basic science research and applied medical research. It's that there are centralized institutions that unintentionally sponsor bad behaviors by creating perverse incentives. For instance, consider the culture of publisher parish. As a scientist, it's imperative that you not only publish often, but that your publications generate a lot of citations. This is because there are funding bodies who essentially allocate capital based on a researcher's prior publication history. In theory, this makes sense, right? Like if you have money and you want to give it to science, you want to give it to someone who's demonstrated the ability to do good work in the past. But in practice, highly cited papers don't always necessarily equate with good work. In fact, meta-scientists have found that the more often a paper is cited, actually it's less likely to reproduce in the future. And scientists generally don't want to produce like kind of like incremental small findings because they're less likely to be cited and make them less likely to gain funding in the future. The downstream effects of this is a tremendous amount of waste. People have estimated that between 50 to 85 percent of all science is irreproducible, which is essentially just money down the drain. And as you can see, it's a lot of money. So what are we building at Research Hub to try and fix this? We're kind of taking two approaches. The first is to build an online native tool that allows anyone to publish scientific research in the open. The second is creating incentives for healthy research behaviors. As you can see here, we kind of have a Reddit-style forum where anyone can earn the ERC20 token research coin for sharing papers, publishing directly to our forum, openly commenting on these papers, and doing peer reviews. We also have some tools that allow for collaborative uh, writing of scientific papers. This is an electronic lab notebook that allows anyone to work together uh, with their colleagues around the world and publish directly to our forum. It's kind of like a Notion editor for science. We also have a reference manager we just shipped, which allows scientists to save the papers they're most interested in and then annotate them. As you can see here, we have one of our immunologists, Cole, who's using our reference manager to leave inline, or inline comments that become a peer review on researchup.com. When you shared content that's been highly upvoted, you earn research coin. And what can you do with research coin? You can create incentives for other scientists. So for instance, say you just shared a preprint and you'd like a peer review. Rather than paying a journal an article processing charge, you can take the research coin you've already earned and create a bounty for another researcher to come in and share a peer review. There are lots of ways people are using bounties right now. For instance, we have a neuroscientist who is trying a new protocol in their lab. They kind of got stuck, and they came to Research Hub to try and get unstuck. They created a bounty for an expert to come in and troubleshoot their protocol, and they ended up moving forward in their own experiments in their own PhD career. One of the examples that I'm most proud of, and I think illustrates what we're trying to do here at Research Hub, is um, if anybody remembers a couple months ago uh, in Mexican Congress, there were aliens that were presented to the world. Kind of fortunately, the people who presented these aliens actually took a DNA sample and submitted it to NCBI. So on Research Hub, we have community members who are interested in this and were like, hey, let's figure out what's going on here. So they got together, used our electronic lab notebook, and created a post, attached a bounty to it, for someone to come in and actually analyze the DNA that was shared on NCBI. Spoiler alert, unlikely to be aliens, unfortunately. We had a bioinformaticist within 24 hours of the bounty being created that came in, did some analytics, and found that there was a lot of eukaryotic, some prokaryotic DNA, and some unidentified DNA. Um, so yeah, this is kind of like a small example of what can potentially happen at scale with Research Hub. So I want to leave everybody with one of my favorite quotes um, from Aaron Schwartz, the founder of Reddit. Thank you very much for your time. <laughs>